Hello and welcome to this episode of the Cloud Bytes TV series. Uh, this is the third episode in our Lightning Web Component series. And uh, what we're doing today is we're going to take our second Aura component that we had before, which was our Create Task component. And there's a link uh, in the description, but also there'll be a card that should pop up here that will give you a link back to how we built that Aura component so you can see the differences. Uh, first thing we have on screen is our uh, Aura uh, Apex controller. So our Apex controller with an Aura enabled method. Um, and that's going to ask us to save the task and pass in some parameters to do so. Now, a lot of people um, will be asking why aren't we using um, some of the, the utility methods that uh, are given to us um, as part of the Lightning Framework that use the UI API. So there's a bunch of uh, methods in there, create records one, um, that allow us to create some records really quickly and easily. Why is it that we're using Apex? Well. The UI API doesn't actually support the task objects. There's a few objects it doesn't support. Task is one of them. What I'm going to do is I'm going to create another video uh, at the end of this series where we're going to just add a new component on that's going to create a new account for us probably or something like that. Um, and what we're going to do there is we're going to use the uh, UI API that is part of the Lightning system that's bundled in as a, as a utility for us. Um, to enable us to do that. So that's why we're not using that within this. And that's why we have to do some, some different kind of trickery to, to get things working. So anyway, our Apex controller is exactly the same code as we had before, um, takes in four parameters, subject, description, priority, and type, puts them onto our task object that we've instantiated, sets the owner to me, sets an activity date, inserts it, and returns the task for us. So what does our HTML look like? So our HTML, um, again, for our web component, it has a template tag that defines that this is a component we can reuse. It has a lightning card again. Um, and what that lightning card, let's update it. So it's going to say information, not informations. Um, that's just going to go and save up to our server now. And we've got our standard task icon on there as well. So you can see that we've just deployed that. And we're going to have um, a series of different lightning components on here. So the first we've got is our lightning input component. And that's one of the base components that Salesforce provides for us. And it's just an input text field. It's going to have a value of our subject. So if our subject value is set, it pulls that down there. And on change, we're going to then have a method that fires to handle the changing of the value in the field. Now, why do we have to have the on change method? So when we were doing Aura, we had what was known as two-way data binding. So if you changed a value in a field, that would then update the value in the background on the controller. So they went bi-directionally. What Lightning Web Components does is the more standard one-way data binding that you'll see with the likes of React.js. Um, and there are many benefits to this. It means that it's much, much quicker in terms of re-rendering because you're pushing changes down so that you can update the shadow DOM more effectively than if you had a two-way data binding where you've got a lot more changes going on on the client side. So there are real benefits to it. Um, if you want to read more about that, just search for one-way versus two-way data binding. Um, but we're going to have to handle any changes we have to set them on the fields in the background properly. Okay. We then got our Lightning Combo Box, and this is another base component. It just provides a pick list. It's got a name, a label that we will see, a placeholder that we will see. Again, binding to a value. So if we have a predetermined value, we could set that. It has some options, which are the pick list options, and those are our pick list values for the type and also below for the priority. And then again, we've got our on change function to handle the change there. And then finally, we have, first of all, a lightning text area, which has our description in it and a description on change handler, and then our lightning button icon. And that's just going to be a small button that is going to use the add icon. So again, really nice that with these standard base components, we can use the lightning design system icons. Um, and it's just going to allow us to add a task when we hit that. So let's have a look at the JavaScript file in the background then. So again, at the top, we're importing Lightning Element. We're also importing Track now. And what Track does is when you add that decorator to a property, any changes to that property are then pushed down to the UI. So if we update the type, priority, subject, or description here within our JavaScript, it will then push that down and re-render the relevant piece of um, the component. Okay, nice and easy for us. We're also importing the show toast event, which is again from the uh, lightning uh, module that Salesforce will provide. And that's just going to allow us to pop up a toast when the um, 
task has been created and we're going to use our save task method from our lightning uh, create task lightning controller in apex now notice uh, here that i haven't imported wire like we did in the last video um, because we're not going to be wiring that to a property or a function what we're going to do is we're going to call that uh, in line and you'll see how we do that so in our class here we have our four properties type priority subject and description we then have a get uh, method for our type pick list values and that returns an array of objects which have a label and a value for the pick list for our type pick list same for priority pick list values okay and we just have getters on them because we don't want to you know set those pick list values in a different way we then got our handle methods for our on changes so we have handle type priority subject and description change all the same this is really simple what we're doing here is we're saying if handle type change is fired it passes in an event and this is kind of how salesforce have built out the event management system in lightning web components we're going to handle that event and we're going to set the type for example on line 29 we're going to set this dot type which is our type property here to be equal to the value that's in the target property of the event okay and that's fairly standard javascript event management it's nothing too difficult about that um, but something that you know is a little different again to our two-way data binding here and you can just see all of our options up there finally we have our add task method and this is what's uh, fired when we hit the button and the first thing we do is we call our save task method in line and um, this is also just really really simple it's something that i love about um, how we can work with uh, lightning web components they're just much easier to call apex on than it was in aura with actions everywhere and we're just passing in an object which has a subject <coughs> description priority and type as we can see from before and what's really nice about this way of calling um, apex functions is it returns a promise so it's a standard javascript promise we can handle that we have a, a then method we take in that task um, and then we're not going to use that task but what we're going to do is we're going to dispatch an event which is our toast that's going to say it's successful with the task created it's a success type variant um, and so you have all the standard variants there you can see we've also got the error one if there is an error um, and then we're going to just set all of our properties to be blank again so it'll work for us nice and easy for us and on the metadata side no real difference in the meta file from what we had before so let's jump over now to our screen and we can re -re refresh this real quick and we can see it says it's going to come up with enter task information in a second there we go and we're going to enter a subject of um, subscribe to cloud bytes tv so this is going to be a reminder to subscribe to the channel it's uh, another type of task it's a high priority and we're going to subscribe to get the latest videos okay and we're just going to hit the plus button here and it goes away creates the task for us and clears those values out and that's super quick in how that's done that it's really nice and to, to you know use a terrible phrase it's lightning fast it really is lightning quick though if we help over here to our standard task you can see here task has been added it's got a due date um, a couple of days from now and it's just to subscribe so again another really really easy to work with component um, the code's not difficult, it's really quick and you know, simple, um, but it's a lot nicer than the Aura uh, code we had before. And more importantly, it's just a bit cleaner. It makes more sense. Um, and if we go back here again, you know, I mean, the JavaScript file is, a, you know, is about 69 lines long. Again, we could reduce that by just compressing some of it, but it is much, much more efficient, much quicker for us. But more importantly here, the HTML code, much, much simpler. So really nice and easy for us to work with. Um, in the next video, what we're going to do is we're going to mix it up and we're going to get our report. So before we had a report, we were pulling the data from the report and then pushing that into a lightning, uh, into an aura controller, into an aura component, sorry, where we're displaying it. We're going to do the same thing here. We're going to get the data from a report. We're going to put that into a chart and we're going to draw that chart on the screen. And um, it's going to be so nice and easy for us to do so. Hope you found this video uh, useful. Again, remember to uh, hit subscribe to get the latest videos. Uh, if you have any comments, I'd love to hear whether you found this useful or not. Any, anything more you'd like to hear, please put them below the video and hit like if you have enjoyed it. Thank you so much for watching and I look forward to speaking to you on the next video.